I'd like to call to order the third regular meeting of the 2017-2018 Common Council. Will the clerk please read the quote for the day. Thank you, Mayor. Logic clearly dictates that the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. Thank you very much. Would you please call the roll? There are 13 present. Uh, we have uh, three older persons that are excused. Uh, Susan Holshue, John Bellinger, and Andy Schneider. Please join me and stand in for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next, we'll move on to the approval of the minutes from our last council meeting. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, there are no resignations this evening. We'll move on to mayor's appointments, city attorney. I don't have 1.5, I have 8.1. Uh, I hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. Kyle Welton to be considered for appointment to the library board to fulfill the unexpired term of Mia Yang, whose term expires April 30, 20 of, uh, 2020, signed by the mayor. That appointment will lie over. And do we have anyone for public forum? Not this evening. Okay. Uh, next, we'll go on to mayor's announcements. recently had a situation where some of our citizens acted as good Samaritans. I'd like to have Ch Fire Chief Mike Romas come up and give us a little background on this incident. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Lieutenant Warner, would you please come forward also? And then before I do this, Paul and Landon, I would like you to come up here also. Thank you very much. All right. The reason I asked Lieutenant Warner to come up was because he brought this to my attention via an email, and I'm going to read that email to you. Today, Ladder 4 and Med 1 responded to an alley behind the 1200 block of North Avenue. Upon our arrival, we found a male who was lying on the ground between his car and garage. This patient had suffered a major stroke and had been sitting in his car until he was able to crawl out and try to make it to his house. This patient did not make it far and was not able to move anymore. A neighbor and his young son saw this person and stopped their car. They found that this man was unable to speak or move so the father, Paul, called 911. The young son, probably six or eight years old, how old are you? Eight, eight years old, wow, I thought you were 10. <laughs> was waiting in the alley, flagging us down when we arrived so we would find them. If these two persons would not have stopped, this person would have been lying a lot longer. And with a stroke patient, time is very important. I don't know if the mayor or city has any kind of recognition for a person like this or people like this, but if they do, you may want to consider them for it. Respectfully, Lieutenant Warner. So, Lieutenant, I want to thank you for bringing this to our attention. And I just wanted to say that um, things like this didn't ha don't happen all the time. In this day and age, I think people want to not get involved and take a step back. So I take, it takes even more courage and you know, leadership to go and do things like this. Um, Landon? To stand there in the alley and flag that engine down really, really helped a lot. We love it when people turn on the porch lights or wave at us and tell us which way to go to get to the person the fastest way we can. So thank you very much for what you did. So I would like to turn this back over to the mayor who would like to give you your award. 
Thank you very much, Chief Romas. And we put together two certificates of combination for Landon and Paul Beck. While driving through the alley between, behind his house on March 31st of 2017 with his dad, Paul, Landon did assist in saving the life of a fellow, fellow citizen. Landon and his dad saw their neighbor lying between his car and garage, unable to speak or move. Paul immediately called 911 for help. Landon waited in the alley and flagged down the ambulance and the, and the rig when it arrived. And Paul and Landon's help uh, uh, obtained quick medical attention and very likely saved this patient's life. For this selfless action and willingness to get involved, Landon and Paul are to be commended and I hereby affix my signature and the seal of the city upon this document. Landon, this is yours. And Paul. Um, if I may add something, I just want everybody to know, um, this person was transported to Freighter Hospital where they received treatment, and I was just, I just found out today, we followed up on it, that person's gonna um, have a full recovery and be a 100%, that's what we were told, so that's good news. Moving on, we have a couple of proclamations this evening. The first one is a proclamation. In prayer, let us ask that God's light may illuminate the minds and hearts of our people and our leaders so that we may meet the challenges that lie before us with courage, wisdom, and justice. In prayer, let us recall with confidence the promise of old that if we humble ourselves before God and pray and seek his face, he will surely hear and forgive and heal and bless our land. By joint resolution of Congress approved April 17th of 1952, the recognition of a particular day set aside each year as National Day of Prayer has become a, Christ, a Christ, cherished national tradition. Since that time, every president has proclaimed an annual National Day of Prayer, resuming the tradition begun by the Continental Congress. Now, therefore, I, Mike Vandersteen, Mayor of the City of Sheboygan, do hereby proclaim Thursday, May 4th of 2017, is National Day of Prayer in Sheboygan and call upon our citizens to join me in prayer that day. I ask them to gather at Fountain Park Methodist Church at noon or in their homes or places of worships with their ministers and teachers of religion and heads of families to give thanks for everything that is good that God has done for us and seek his guidance and strength in the conduct of our lives. Signed, Michael Vandersteen. This will be presented uh, at the day of prayer at church. <coughs> Next, I'd like uh, Miranda Kell to come up. Miranda's been the sustainability intern in the Department of Planning for how long, Miranda? Um, since June of last year. Since June of last year. And during that time, she's worked on various projects and planning. And one of the most important ones that she's worked on is an education program for recycling. Miranda and the uh, sustainability task force worked to get into almost every uh, uh, elementary school in the Sheboygan Area School District. They have one or two to do yet. But, um, but Miranda puts on a really energetic uh, and an entertaining uh, presentation for these kids and uh, drives home the point of how important recycling is. So we wanna thank her for all the work that she's put forward on this and uh, give her this certificate of appreciation. Thank you very much, Miranda. <laughs> Is uh, Carrie Robertson here? Carrie, would you please come forward? This proclamation is whereas the Senior Activity Center of Sheboygan includes older Americans who richly contribute to our community, and whereas we acknowledge what it means to, to age as changed for the better. 
whereas the Senior Activity Center is committed to supporting older adults as they take charge of their health, explore new opportunities and activities, and focus on independence. And whereas the Senior Activity Center can provide opportunities to enrich the lives of individuals of all ages by involving older adults in the redefinition of aging in our community, the promotion of home and community-based services that support independent living, encouraging older adults to speak up for themselves and others, and providing opportunities for older adults to share their experiences. Now, therefore, I, Mike Vandersteen, the mayor of the city of Sheboygan, do proclaim May of 2017 to be Older Americans Month, and I urge every resident to take time during this month to acknowledge the older adults and the people who serve them as influential and vital parts of our community. I'd like to present this to Carrie. <coughs> All right, have a great month. City of Sheboygan Proclamation. Whereas the Office of City Clerk is a time-honored and vital part of local government and exists throughout the world as one of the oldest professions among public servants. And whereas the City Clerk provides the professional connections between the citizens and the governing bodies and the agencies at the local, county, and state levels. And whereas the, city, the Office of City Clerk it provides professional link between the citizens and the local governing bodies and agencies of government at other levels. And whereas city clerks have pledged to be ever mindful of their neutrality and impartiality, rendering equal service to all residents through transparency and accountable government practices. And whereas the city clerk processes and distributes all agendas and actions of their governing body, serves as the official record keeper for the municipality, issues licenses and permits, facilitates the annual board of review and municipal redistricting projects, and attends various meetings of the municipality and serves as a resource center on functions of the local government and community. And whereas the 1,854 city clerks and 72 county clerks contribute to election administration by attending required training and dedicating themselves to providing fair, non-biased, non-partisan, accurate, and responsible elections in Wisconsin. And whereas city clerks continually strive to improve the administration of the responsibilities of the office of city clerk through participation in educational programs, seminars, workshops, focus groups, and annual conferences across Wisconsin. I now therefore, Mike Vandersteen, by virtue of the authority vested in me as mayor of the city of Sheboygan, do hereby recognize the week of May 7th through May 13th as Municipal Clerks Week and further extend our appreciation to City Clerk Susan Richards and her staff for the vital services that they perform and their exemplary dedication to the community they represent. Present this to the Clerk Richards. And this is the City of Sheboygan proclamation, whereas our city is committed to recognizing our growth and strength and depends upon the safety and economic value of homes, buildings, infrastructure that serve our citizens, both in everyday life and times of natural disaster. Our confidence in the structural integrity of these buildings that make up our community is achieved through the devotion of vigilant guardians, the building safety and fire prevention officials, architects, engineers, builders, tradespeople, design professionals, laborers, and others in the construction industry who work year round to ensure uh, the safe construction of buildings. And whereas these guardians are dedicated members of the International Code Council, a U.S.-based organization that brings together local, state, and federal officials that are experts in the building environment to create and implement the highest quality codes to protect us in the buildings where we live, learn, work, worship, and play. And whereas our nation benefits economically and technologically from using the international codes that are developed by a national voluntary consensus codes and standards develop, developing organization, our government is able to avoid the high cost and complexity of developing and maintaining these codes. 
which are the most widely adopted building safety and fire prevention codes in the nation. These modern building codes include safeguards to protect the public from natural disasters such as hurricanes, snowstorms, tornadoes, wildfires, floods, and earthquakes. And whereas Building Safety Month is sponsored by the International Code Council to remind the public about the critical role that our uh, of our community's largely unknown guardians of public safety are local code officials who assure us of safe, efficient, and livable buildings that are essential to keeping America great. And whereas code officials who are partners in community safety and economic growth, the theme for Building Safety Month of 2017 encourages all Americans to raise awareness of the importance of building safe and re resilient construction, fire prevention, disaster mitigation, and new technologies in the construction industry. Building Safety Month of 2017 encourages appropriate steps everyone can take to ensure the places where we live, le learn, work, worship, and play are safe and recognizes that countless lives have been saved due to the implementation of safety codes by local and state agencies. And whereas each year in observance of the Building Safety Month, Americans are asked to consider the commitment to improve building safety and economic investment at home and in the community and to acknowledge the essential service provided to all of us by local and state building departments, fire prevention bureaus, and federal agencies in the protecting the lives and property. I'm Mike Vandersteen, Mayor of the City of Sheboygan, to hereby proclaim the month of May 2017 as Building Safety Month Accordingly, I encourage our citizens to join with their communities in the participation of, of Building Safety Month activities. Signed, Michael Vandersteen. Uh, Jack Van Dixorn is here. Okay, next we'll move on to item number two, which is a hearing. Item 2.1 is hearing number one of 1718 for the proposed assessments for water laterals in Broadway Avenue from South 7th Street to South 13th Street. Is there anyone here wishing to be heard? Please come forward. Hi, can you give me your name and home address, please? Uh, my, name, <clears throat> my name is Terrence Doyle. My home address is uh, representing 1135 Broadway Avenue. <coughs> home address is the... Oh, that's your home address, 1135? No, uh, my home address is 545 Pinehurst Court, Sheboygan Falls. The property I'm representing is 1135 Broadway. Broadway, okay, go ahead. Um, in reference to the water project, uh, first off, when it was first presented in February, uh, it's a great project. It really is. Uh, it's got a lot of stuff going for it. Uh, first night I was introduced down at the uh, park meeting, and there's only one drawback to the, they presented the cost based on uh, approximately $150 a linear foot, and because I live on the south side of the road and the water mains on the north side of the road, I get 36 feet, the person on the north side of the road gets seven. So for the same service, this is from the water main to the curb stop, not from the curb stop to my meter, which uh, is paid for by the DNR in this case, which makes it a wonderful project because that's an additional cost I don't have to consume at this time. Uh, so I did get involved in the project at that time, uh, a little more, a few meetings at the water department with the engineers and project coordinators up there. I've had a couple conversations with the alder person in my area, um, and it, it didn't go very far. Uh, actually, it didn't go very far at all because my suggestion is we know the project goes from 7th Street to 13th Street. We know how many feet of laterals it is. We know how many residents are being serviced by this. So you have a service to each house divided amongst the total uh, footage of laterals is what should be paid by all, not determining whether you're on the south side or north side, 7 foot or 36 feet. In my involvement, I reviewed the project with the project engineer at the water department and I suggested a couple of changes to the project, such as why are you tearing out the old main when you can dig a new line closer to my side of the road is, is the intent, uh, and then 
bore drill from the main right to the house meter base. And well, that was, well, this is the project and this is what we're going for. It's been engineered already. Well, so what happens in the first part of March, it got uh, rejected because the bids came in and the DNR wanted their section separated out. Well, I'm glad to find out now that the, uh, the project going forward here is they moved it over seven feet towards my house. Uh, the new main is going to go in, which is a, it's a large, much larger main, great for capacity and uh, uh, stability in the water system. And they're going to direct bore from the main to my meter base. They're not going to have to worry about that tree that came up as an issue that's in my front yard next to the old water line because they're moving it over to the center of my house and drilling straight through underground without digging up the whole road, which is great. So, and the other benefit of this is the project no longer is removing the old water mains, which are lead, and as you start disturbing lead, we know it floats in the mo motion of water. So that's one of the other great benefits of that is now we don't have uh, contamination, accidental contamination of water, lead in our system. We're going to have some, we know that, but you can't control everything. So that moving forward, the project now has been reduced from 150 down to let's see, 93 dollars a linear foot. I'm still paying for 36 feet. Wait, no, it's actually, actually, it says 36 feet, but I did go back to the water department again and had another discussion with them, and I got the reviews and pulled out their sheets, and all the engineering drawings say I have 30 feet. The assessment page you sent to the city clerk still has the old numbers on. So it says 36. So that's a typo error, I understand. They added the uh, uh, the seven feet to the north side of the road, but didn't take off the south side of the road. It's interesting, but uh, those are just small, minor details, and I understand it's in an estimated assessment, so they're going to finalize the detail when we get to that point. Uh, trying to figure all the, oh, the other part of that is that even though I'm paying for that 36 feet, I'm also in the future responsible for repair of that 36 feet that is under the city road that gets repaired by water mains, sewer, so on. So if that somehow interrupts or gets damaged, I am responsible for repair of that 36 feet or the 30 feet. That's supposedly mine, even though it's underneath the city works and I, I can't control the traffic or anything like that over the top of my own, or apparently the pipes I own, but that uh, doesn't come into play. It's just, a, just an additional cost someday down the road that I might be responsible for. My suggestion has always been back to if I have a service coming to my house for my water main, whatever the cost is out in the road work up to that curb stop should be equal. You can take all the seats, all the, they have all the documents of all the streets in the city here, how wide they are and what they're supposed to be for the laterals from one side. When you do a project like this from 7th Street to 13th Street, you could say everybody should pay an equal share instead of it's time to change this. Uh, and they, oh, that's the other part of the said, Well, I can bill you because of 122-78. 122-78, or 98, I'm sorry, uh, is water main extensions. It has nothing, and that is specifically describes it as anything in the corporate limits of adding platted and unplatted uh, properties. And it's extensions, building new suburbs and so on not going back and replacing, repairing, and charging people for, even though it's 100 years old, and I don't have a problem paying for the upgrades. I just don't like it being pushed on me that we're going to charge you more than the next guy because we can. That was the statement I was received, because we can. You know, so I guess my involvement turned out pretty good because we're actually getting the another water main put in, we're not disturbing the old one, we're doing some boring, reducing costs all the way around, and having a better situation. Uh, we're still at the same original problem I got stuck with, is that the little sour note in there is that it's not fair. And uh, it's, that's one, that's I guess the only hang up. The, pro the project itself is a wonderful project. The footage, uh, and actually, the 30 feet actually comes out pretty close to being what it's supposed to be for me right now. Uh, for number wise, the total billing, and I don't know if any of you have, have looked at this at all in detail, I have immensely back and forth. I've been there and measured the roads. I measured everybody's curb stop out there, and they're billing for laterals of 56 feet. 
The road is 40 feet wide. Laterals are two feet, or curb stops are two, two feet on either side of the curb, up to five feet. Uh, that's what's uh, written in the code. So 40 feet and, 40, and four is 44 to 49, not 56. So there is a, a term for billing for more than what you service. I don't know what that is. My lawyer knows what it is, but I don't know what it is. I don't care. Um, I'm really not that, it's not that big of a deal to get that far. But I, I just ask you at this time, you have the opportunity, this has to be approved by the Common Council, and you have the opportunity to take this because this is going to go on for, <coughs> until all the water mains in this city are replaced with the PVC, moving all the lead pipes, so why not get it corrected now instead of letting something wrong continue on and put, put this through a lot of other people's anguish, you know, the, the process of changing the billing purposes and so on. So that's all I have to say. Thank you for listening, and uh, we'll go from there. We lost the paper clips. So. Thanks, Terry. Is there anyone else wishing to be heard? Is there anyone else wishing to be heard? Is there anyone else wishing to be heard? Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to close the hearings. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Next, we'll move on. Um, Alderperson Mary Lynn Donahue, did you have a item you wanted to pull forward? Thank you, Mayor. Um, if we could uh, pull forward item 6.4 regarding our promissory notes. Is there any objection to pulling 6.4 forward? Seeing none. 6.4 is RC number 6 of 1617 by Finance and Personnel to whom was referred resolution number 245 of 1617 by Alderperson Wolf awarding the sale of $5 million in general obligation promissory note series 2017A and recommends passing the resolution. Alderperson Donahue. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I move to uh, accept, adopt, and pass the resolution. Second. Thank you very much. And um, we, we just had a, a sale, I understand, today, which was successful. And I'd like to call Carol Worth up to give us a little bit of an explanation on this bond issue. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I see some new faces, so I'll introduce myself. I am Carol Worth. I'm with the firm of Wisconsin Public Finance Professionals. We serve as financial advisor to the city when the city goes out and borrows money in the bond market. So today, the resolution that we are considering um, is for the purpose of borrowing money. And I distributed a handout prior to the meeting, and I'll just go through that briefly with you to explain what we're acting on tonight. And it starts with, under background, um, back on March 27th, I presented a report to the Finance Committee which was acted upon by the council on April 5th in the form of a resolution that set a sale date of today to borrow $5 million for 2017 capital improvement projects. So under that background section, it lists all the projects and the dollar amounts associated with those projects. The next step is we prepare the city to go into the bond market. And that starts with coordinating with the city's bond attorney, and that's the firm of Quarles and Brady, to prepare legal documents, one of which you're acting upon tonight. We also prepare what's called an official statement, which is a prospectus, it's a booklet like this, that goes out into the bond market for investors to review and consider investing in the city. It's also used for the next step, which is to go through a bond rating process with Moody's Investor Service. So each time the city does a borrowing, we have to go through that bond rating process. So tonight we bring you the results. And it starts with Moody's Investor Service reaffirmed the city's AA2 bond rating. That's an extremely high bond rating. Okay, there's only two notches above that in the entire bond rating scale. So you have a very coveted, high quality bond rating. The other is that this morning, we accepted bids from underwriters um, all over the country uh, that uh, we actually received 10 bids. So Sheboygan was very popular this morning. 
you have great market name, um, they like the, your high quality bond rating, they like the structure of your financing, and uh, we have a good result to bring you, and that is the firm of UMB Bank out of Kansas City, Missouri, has won this sale with a true interest rate of a 2.067%. <coughs> and I will point out the um, details of the financing briefly as I take you through your resolution tonight. The council action will lock in the borrowing terms, it'll lock in these interest rates, even though the city will not receive all the money and you receive it all at one time on May 15th, but your resolution uh, action tonight locks in those rates so you are no longer at any market risk for those rates changing. And the, as I mentioned, all of the money comes to the city at one time and so that will occur on May 15th. Okay. With that, the second page of the handout on the back side is the repayment schedule. Um, for the five million, which shows you it's repaid with principal once a year, starting in 18, 2018 through 2027. So it's a 10 year promissory note. The bottom part of that page is a pricing summary, which shows you the activity of how the bonds are sold to investors. So the column in the middle, the yield column, shows you what each of those investors are receiving for each one of those principal amounts. The dollar price column shows you what the investors pay. Okay. And the very, very bottom of that page, it says uh, true interest cost, and that's where that 2.067% uh, comes from. Following that as several pages, which is the Moody's credit report. The very first page, I'll just briefly tell you what's, what's in it and how to read it. Uh, the first page does say Moody's assigns the AA2 bond rating. Under the summary rating rationale, the second paragraph, small paragraph, is really the summary of all the paragraphs that are going to follow in this document. And it basically says that the AA2 as for the moderately sized tax base, it's below average resident wealth and income, and strong financial position, and moderate debt and pension burden. <coughs> so those are the various categories that are looked at. And you can see under the credit strengths, the things that are more directly um, the result of, of city actions, um, you rank very high, which is your strong financial position and solid reserves, and your below average debt burden with rapid principal amortization. The challenges are more what I would call indirectly uh, under your control, but yet influenced by the city and economic development that you try to promote, and that is your demographic profile and your uh, tax base, um, which right now is just starting to take off. So we're going to um, watch it as it improves and that will obviously improve your credit rating. So uh, I just want to take you to the next page, the next two pages. If you look at on the second page, there's key indicators, which is really measuring the city of Sheboygan's AA2 to all of the other nationally rated AA2s. So that's the way Moody's puts that information out. The bottom part, it says detailed rating considerations. And this is where you're going to see the headline or the heading of each paragraph that's going to tie into that first page under that summary rationale. So you'll see the first one talks about the economy and the tax base and all the information that they are reporting on under that section. The next section is titled financial operations and reserves. Okay, and the next page has liquidity, uh, debt, and, and pensions, and moderate debt and pension burdens, and also makes the point of the rapid amortization with 96% in 10 years, so that's how, that's their benchmark that determines that classification, okay? So, so that's how the credit report is prepared. 
And I'll just move along here to the next, and you go through the next couple pages, and then you're going to see the beginning of the resolution itself, where it starts within a corner, Office of the City Clerk. Okay, so that's our resolution. And the resolution goes back and recites some history that talks about that action taken by the council on April 5th. And that action basically was saying we're going to have a sale on to this day for $5 million for the purpose of funding 2017 capital improvement projects. And then it goes through and starts talking about a number of exhibits to this resolution. And each of those exhibits is a result of what happened this morning with taking the bids and bringing these final results to you. So they've incorporated all of those into this resolution. So if you don't mind, I'll take you to the pages with the exhibits. So the resolution itself has nine pages. So if you look at the bottom and you get to page nine, that's the last page of the resolution. And that's followed by an exhibit A that says official notice of sale. Okay, the official notice of sale is the document that is sent out into the marketplace that starts the process. It tells the underwriters that the city of Sheboygan is going to have this sale and that in order to place a bid, this is how you do it. So this is their instructions as to how to do that. So this document itself is five pages long. Okay, so I'll move on. And the next exhibit is Exhibit B. Exhibit B, it's our letterhead, Wisconsin Public Finance, you'll see at the top. And it says bid tabulation. There is the 10 firms that placed a bid this morning. Okay, now again, these are the managing underwriters that placed the bid. So it doesn't mean that only 10 firms in the country participated because <coughs> what happens is each of these firms develops a syndicate with other firms that rely on the managing underwriter to submit the bid. But each one of these has an account that, uh, that is made up of various members. Okay, so, so you can see there that um, UMB Bank actually uh, was the winning bidder originally with a 2.073% interest rate. The second bid very, very close. It's 2.074 and so on. Okay, so you can see with some very, very tight bidding. And after the way these are bid, um, they bid these with a premium from the investors and they bid over $90,000 of premium, so I suggested changing the amortization schedule so that the city could pay off $100,000 faster with that premium, because that's all you can do with it. You can't use premium for projects. It has to be used for debt service. As a result of that, the underwriter agreed to that change, and that brought your, your rate down to the 2.067, and that saved you another $21,000. So you had a very, very successful sale. Uh, last year we had uh, between six and eight bids on the sales, and this year you did even better with, with achieving 10 bids. The next page is Exhibit C, which is the bid form, which shows you exactly how the underwriters submit their bids, okay, with all the technical information on that. This is the contract between UMB Bank and the city. The next page is Exhibit D, and this is the uh, pricing schedule, which you have already seen on page two of the report. The next page is another exhibit. It's the debt service schedule, which you have already seen. And the last exhibit is called the form of note, which is really a template. There is one prepared for each principal amount. So this is actually how the bonds will look when they're completed by the attorneys. So, so you had a congratulations. You had a very, very successful uh, bond rating and sale today. And uh, are there any questions? Other person born. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, 
Carol, I forgot to ask at the meeting, I don't think we would ever want to because of the interest rate that we have, but are these callable? Yes, the last two maturities are callable. Okay. Yes, and we do that because um, that provides you with flexibility in your future. Call features are used not only for saving money by refinancing, but it also gives you a second chance in your future to look at what's happening eight years from now and see under the law, you have the ability to amortize general obligation debt over 20 years, okay? But you also want to consider the useful life of whatever you're financing. Mm -hmm. But nonetheless, if eight years from now, it serves a purpose to, rather than pay off the debt in two years, maybe you want to do it in three years and kind of swap out the interest. I mean, that it's your ability to do that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Carol, well, thank you very much for the explanation and all your help with this bond issuance. Thank you. Then we have a motion before us. Is there any further discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Thirteen eyes. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Thanks, Carol. Okay, next we'll move on to consent agenda. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. Make a motion to accept and file all ROs, accept and adopt all RCs, and pass all resolutions and ordinances. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion, Alderperson Boren. Alderperson Bitters. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I'd like to pull ahead uh, 3.5, please. Okay, so you want to pull 3.5 out for a separate vote? Correct. Okay. Uh, item 3.5 is resolution number 2 of 1718 by Alderperson Bitters and Nelson confirming the proposed assessments for water lateral replacements in the Broadway Avenue from South 7th Street to South 13th Street. And I'll just need a, 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 need a separate motion to pass. Okay, we're all good. Um, you wanted to make further comments, Alderperson Bitter? All right, thank you, Mayor. Uh, this uh, 3.5 re references the earlier hearing we had uh, <coughs> regarding the, the water assessments. Uh, I tried to incorporate this into our earlier discussion with the street assessments. Uh, it didn't seem to work out that way. Uh, I guess I, where I'm going with this is if, we, if you refer back to the attachment that we see in board docs for the, the hearing itself, where it, there's actually a table of who got assessed what, it, 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 north side of the street versus south side of the street on Broadway. Uh, there's a long side and a short side. Uh, the simple fact that the water uh, main 
doesn't end up in the center of the street. The street assessments, in which we did away with for this year, everybody pays an equal amount of that street. When you bought your property anywhere in town, you had no idea ahead of time where is that main located? Where is the, the sanitary sewer located, the storm sewers? It, this ends up being a surprise to everyone. And uh, as I look at addresses in this, in this schedule that are directly across from each other, there's a difference of 20 running feet that we're billing per lineal foot. So e even at a, uh, in, this, uh, in this attachment, they list the short di side assessment tentatively uh, at $112 and the long side at $93. There's still a discrepancy of, uh, in a lot of cases, of $1,500 just from being on the wrong side of the street. Now, I'm voting against this for tonight. Uh, and in the future, because I, I realizing where we are in the game in terms of budgeting for the utility, uh, the water utility, uh, same for us. I, before the next budget sequence, I, I'd like to see this go to Committee of the Whole, that we end up with a more equitable system for doing these, these water assessments. Because we pass along these police powers to the water utility. We could kill this tonight if we wanted to. I, I, I don't get the sense that that would happen, but we could have. I just, I want to have an eye to the future. As, as Mr. Doyle pointed out in his, his testimony during the public hearing, uh, there has to be a more equitable way to, to calculate these, these costs. And thank you. Thank you for those comments. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I guess I have a question um, for Chuck. Uh, being that this is the water utility, if we were to entertain the idea of reviewing it for a, you know, like, um, like the alderman had mentioned, uh, like the city assessment where it would be just cut down the middle, is this something that we would have to refer back to committee? Is it something that we, I mean, we can't really vote on anything like that. Well, it, there's an even more fundamental issue, which is there's a state statute that tells you how you must assess to assess any other way than the way we are assessing would violate the state statute uh, because the benefit is based on the ownership and the city does not own the laterals, uh, the, the homeowner does. And so if the homeowner happens to own a longer lateral, they have to be assessed uh, according to state statute for that benefit. Um, so you can choose not to assess, although that's not really your role that would you know, that would start with the water uh, commissioners, although you could, I guess you could vote it down in the end um, and, and not fund it. Um, or you can assess. If you're going to assess, you have to do it the way that it's provided for in state statute. Okay. And if you don't assess, we'll still have lead in, in the water system. Uh, yeah, yeah. Understood. Uh, excuse me. Uh, Chuck, to that end, is it specific to per uh, linear foot the, the way the way this uh, the way this schedule is uh, laid out this assessment is based on uh, linear feet in this case between the, the water main and the curb stop you know, everything beyond that is a DNR grant and I think that's fantastic but does it specifically say it has to be assessed from the main pipe to this valve running feet no, it doesn't say that because in many communities, the water utility actually owns the lateral to the curb stop, but not in Sheboygan. That's a function of in 1916 or thereabouts when the city purchased what was actually a private water utility. Um, most communities actually started their own water utilities um, as, as municipalities. Uh, Sheboygan did not. It was private for many years until it became clear that the private sector is unable uh, to provide safe water. People were dying of typhoid. Um, and so the uh, city purchased the, uh, the uh, uh, water utility at that point, uh, but 
only purchased the mains because the laterals still at that point owned were owned by the property owners and we've continued that through that time the state statute indicates that it must be based on uh, the assessment needs to be based on the benefit granted and in this case the benefit granted is a new lateral a non lead lateral um, and the, the benefit is if they're further away from the main their benefit is larger uh, because it's a longer lateral uh, than one who happens to be closer to the main. In some ways, it's kind of the luck of the draw, but that is the way the state statute is written, and the only way uh, we could go against that would be for the state to amend the statute uh, to allow uh, for um, it to be based not on um, the actual benefit, uh, but on some other way of determining what we think is fair. Alderperson Boren. Uh, I was going to ask a similar to question that Alderman Wolf asked, so nothing. Okay, good. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? That's what I asked you before as part of consent. Well, we're separating it out. Do you want to make a motion to pass it? Alderperson Bitters, we need a motion uh, on this one item. Or somebody needs to make a motion. I'll make a motion to pass. Second. Second. Okay, we have a motion on the floor to pass uh, this item. Okay, we'll take a vote. It's not there? Yeah. Well, not in there. Oh. Okay, thank you. Ten eyes, three no's. Motion passes. Okay, the other items in the consent agenda are before us. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll on the consent agenda? Thirteen eyes. Motion passes. Next, we'll move on to number four, reports of officers. Item 4.1 is RO number 11 of 1718 by City Administrator presenting the first quarter City of Sheboygan strategic plan uh, action items and critical measures update to the Common Council. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and file. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion, I'll turn it over to Alderperson, or other Administrator Hoffman. Uh, thank you, Mayor Van der Steen. Uh, included in your uh, packet uh, was a sheet uh, containing seven individual pages. Uh, this is a document that you've seen in the past couple months, if you recall. This was the result of uh, a strategic plan that was approved in January of this year uh, between your city staff your management team specifically, and you as alders participated in a retreat last summer. Ultimately, uh, you had an informational meeting at the uh, Senior Center, and again, as I mentioned in January, you approved the document. The document has uh, six key focus areas. Uh, within each of those focus areas, it lists uh, specific action items uh, for 2017, 2018, <coughs> as well as ways to measure progress. Uh, referred to as critical measures. Uh, what I'd like to do tonight and what we'll be doing every quarter is asking the department heads to update this document so that you can see, the residents of the community can see that we're making progress on these action items as well as uh, making progress on the critical measures. Um, in the future, I probably will increase the size of the first column. If you see in the first column, there are really small letters. It's probably the easiest way for me to refer 
to items uh, as opposed to identifying the label. So I will make them larger in the future. Uh, first thing I'd like to kick off under quality of life is item number 10, uh, which is expand library resources, uh, uh, resource sharing uh, consortium to a four county system. Uh, that was, uh, in fact, approved uh, late last year. It's now referred to as the Monarch System instead of uh, Lakeshore uh, Monarch Library System. Monarch li library system. Uh, redesigned second floor of Mead Library to, uh, to provide more collaborative public space. Again, that was done uh, in December of last year, so that has been completed. Uh, under critical measures, number 15 is fire department. Percent of first unit arrival time is 24 seconds or less, so four minutes or less. The goal is 90% 90, 90 of the time uh, that unit should arrive in, again, four minutes or less. Uh, year to date, we're at 88%, so we're at 98% of, of meeting our goal for the first quarter. Uh, number 17 is part one crime rates, violent crimes per thousand <coughs> residents. Uh, again, for the first quarter, uh, we're showing uh, 0.57, the goal is uh, 2.7. So uh, again, first quarter would mean normally that we'd be at 25%. Uh, the 0.57 uh, calculates out to be 21%, so we're under the, the goal, and the goal is less than what uh, actual crime, part <coughs> one crime rates were for 2016. Uh, the next item is part one crime rates for property crimes uh, per 1,000 residents. Uh, year to date, uh, 3.5. Uh, the goal for the whole year is 22.25. Uh, we're at only 16%. And again, the uh, target is less than uh, prior years. Uh, normally, at this point in the year, we'd be at 5.56. You can see that we're substantially less than that. On page two, which is infrastructure and public facilities, action items, uh, line 33, which is continue to hold Tree City USA designation. In fact, uh, this last week, last Friday, uh, the mayor and staff in a class from Grant Elementary School did participate in a um, Tree City, uh, Tree City or Arbor Day uh, celebration. Uh, number 36 is install new river docks at South Pier. Uh, those were installed uh, this past month. Uh, line item number 37, refurbish South 8th Street Bridge. Uh, that project is well underway as far as um, a pre-bid meeting occurred in the last week. Uh, the mechanical work will, will start after October 31st, which is when we shut the bridge down for, uh, for boat traffic. Uh, so we can, uh, again, the bridge, in essence, will be fixed in position and we'll work on the mechanics again after October 31st. The letting of the bids uh, will occur in June. So we're a month away from knowing what the cost of the project is. Uh, next page is economic development, um, number 52 which is the first item, construct the arts slash culture uh, plaza. Um, it, uh, to coincide with the opening of the Encore uh, apartment project, uh, all the landscaping, all the grading will be complete. Uh, the only thing that is expected to still be open <coughs> at that time is, is completing the stage. Um, 56, execute a new tourism commission and tourism zone. Again, this was completed uh, last year in the month of December. So that is complete. <clears throat> On the 58, coordinate with consultant for a new business park project. Uh, a city staff has been meeting with a consultant. Uh, last meeting, in fact, occurred as late as last week. Uh, some suggestions were, be, uh, were made. Uh, we will receive an update. Ultimately, uh, presentation will be made to the Public Works Committee. Uh, under the Economic Development Critical Measures, uh, 74, <coughs> uh, which is kind of the middle of the pack, uh, new number of new residential units, our construction commenced, uh, 42 so far this year, uh, 80 is the goal, so we're at 53% of meeting our goal for 2017. Uh, like three from the bottom, number 78, value new commercial permits. This is based upon permits issued uh, and projects commenced. Almost $4 million in 2017 uh, uh, have, have been issued and commenced. The goal is 10 million for the year, uh, so we're at 40% of, of our target. Next page is neighborhood revitalization. Um, 
number 89, which is the last item under the action items, implement north side neighborhood beat officer. Uh, that officer, in fact, was hired, uh, started the first day of this year. Uh, so that's been completed. Uh, neighborhood revitalization critical measures, number of uh, number 94, number of new neighborhood associations. Uh, the goal is two, uh, two have been created. Uh, and then 97, number of code enforcement orders issued. The goal is 1,000 for the year. We're at 425 for this first quarter. So we're at 43% of our year yearly goal. Next page, governing and fiscal management. Uh, number 103, uh, continue providing detailed uh, city budget documents to citizens. Again, the budget was uh, published in uh, February, February uh, 9th. Uh, and in fact, there's another item, uh, 108, submit budget documents to GFOA, Government Finance Offices Association Award for consideration that was sent out on, on the 9th as well of February. So we hope to hear by August regarding uh, their review of our first time application. 110, which is continue employee newsletter that is occurring on a monthly basis. I'm sorry, on a quarterly basis. Um, 112, uh, develop a succession plan for all management employees, uh, all management positions. Uh, a workshop was held, in fact, here at, in the city at Maywood uh, on the 13th of uh, April. We had uh, really good attendance from uh, most of our management team. Uh, other communities were invited. It was put on by uh, CIVMIC, uh, by the same facilitator that assisted us on our, our, our retreat. So this, uh, effort kicks off uh, a year-long uh, project to, to develop succession planning. Uh, last item on this page is Moody's Investor Credit, uh, Moody's Investment Investor Service Bond Rating for Sheboygan. And as you heard tonight, uh, we received a reaffirmation of uh, AA2. Uh, last page is communication, uh, <coughs> item 125. 125, which is a second line, create a monthly electronic uh, community newsletter. And again, through the mayor's office, that is being issued on a monthly basis. Uh, 129, which is the last item under action items, hire a consultant to update the city's brand as a destination and as an organization. Uh, in discussing with staff, uh, this item has been delayed until 2018. Uh, the thought is with um, progress uh, that we make along with the other communities that are part of the National Marine Sanctuary designation, that would be an appropriate time to update our, our, our brand. Under communication critical measures, uh, 135 number of users on next door, uh, we are already at 107% of our goal. N on 136, number of likes on all city Facebook accounts, again this involves uh, multiple departments, uh, we're at 94% so far this year. And last item is number of Nexel uh, contacts. Uh, we are at uh, 100, line 140. We're at 102% of our goal. So uh, again, I probably will choose different items to update you on a quarterly basis. If you have any questions regarding any of these items, uh, feel free to contact me or the department head. Um, many of the management team members, in fact, will be reporting on additional performance measurements, uh, at, again, at their uh, at, at your committee commission or board meeting, typically the month following a quarter. So as an example on your packet, in your, uh, on your agenda tonight, uh, Chief Domagowski has uh, an item report of officers which he is detailing where he's at on many of his key performance measures. Thank you very much. Thank you for that presentation. Are there any other uh, questions or discussion on the motion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Motion passes. Uh, the other items under reports of officers 4.2 through 4.12 will be referred to various committees. Under resolutions, item 5.1 is resolution number 7 of 1718 by Alderperson Wolf authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into a contract for the construction of parking lot number 14B. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I make a motion to suspend and pass resolution. Second. Second. Thank you for that motion. Uh, is there any objection to suspension? 
then we have a motion on the floor to, uh, to pass the resolution. Is there any discussion on the motion? And Alderperson Wolf, did you want to explain what the, uh, the rush is on this one? Uh, sure. Um, Mayor, what we're looking at doing is uh, because of the, um, the development of the apartments at the, um, what's the name of that? Boston store site. Yeah, the Boston store site, thank you. Uh, the elevation was off when be, due to uh, construction issues and the, the soil. And what's going to happen is instead of us basically repairing the, where the parking lot joins the Boston store complex, we are now going to have to uh, repave the whole parking lot and the curb accordingly. Thank you for that explanation. Is there any other discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Twelve eyes, one no. Motion passes. The remaining items, 5.2 through 5.9, will be referred to various committees. Under reports of committees, item 6.1 is RC number 3 of 1718 by law and licensing to whom is referred. Uh, RC number 422 of 1617 and RO number 261 of 1617 by the city clerk submitting various licensed applications recommends that the beverage operator's license 1368 be denied based upon his failure to accurately reveal all relevant convictions on his license application, his record of violations related to the licensed activity, and his failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderperson Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I would move to uh, accept and adopt. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion? Is uh, Mr. Galstad here, Brennan Galstad? He is not. Um, the uh, committee reviewed uh, Mr. Uh, Galstad's application uh, and, as outlined in the resolution, uh, felt that based on the uh, failure to reveal relevant convictions and, more importantly, violations re uh, related to the license activity, that his license should be denied and the committee uh, voted unanimously to do so. Thank you for that. those comments. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage. Eyes. Motion passes. Item 6.2 is RC number 4 of 1718 by the Law and Licensing Committee to whom was referred RC number 422 of 1617 and RO number 261 of 1617 by the City Clerk submitting various license application and recommends that taxi cab driver's license number 0545 be denied based upon his failure to accurately review all relevant convictions on his license. Application is record of violations related to the licensed activity and his record as a repeat law offender. Alderperson Donahue. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I move to accept and adopt. Second. Thank you for that motion and support under discussion. And I, Mr. Cook, you're here. <coughs> Would you like to speak before the council? Yes. If you go up to the microphone. Um, uh, uh, is it Cook or Cook? I'm sorry. Cook. Mr. Cook uh, did appear at our meeting. Uh, we had a substantial discussion regarding his application and the factors involved in our decision to uh, recommend that uh, he not be granted the license. And I, uh, Mr. Cook, if you want to explain your uh, situation. The biggest thing I'm, I'm not understanding is, you know, all that stuff is in the past. It's happened already. I paid my fines. I paid my dues. You know, yes, I got in some trouble. Um, I understand that. But I'm no longer getting into trouble. I'm staying out of trouble, and I'm keeping myself, you know, within the laws of the city. And I don't believe I should be denied because I do, I do practice um, driving skills as 
the way they should be practiced in the city of Sheboygan now. Okay, all right, you may sit down then. Any other discussion? Other person born. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Alderman Donahue, how recent were some of these uh, issues with uh, that the uh, committee felt were, were a problem? Um, there were a number of violations and- I, I can read them if you'd like. Yes, thank you. I'll read them from oldest to newest. 2010, ordinance disorderly conduct. 2011, commercial motor vehicle failure to stop after an accident. 2011, tire squealing. 2011, ordinance disorderly conduct. 2012, misdemeanor criminal damage to property. 2012, domestic disorderly conduct. 2013, misdemeanor violation of a harassment restraining order. 2013, misdemeanor violation of a domestic abuse injunction. A second, 2013, misdemeanor violation of domestic abuse injunction. 2014, failure to yield right of way. 2015, ordinance littering. 2015, following too closely. 2015, suspended registration. 2016, ordinance disorderly conduct. And three, 2016, drivings while suspended. Alderperson Donahue. Um, and I believe uh, in our committee deliberations, we were most interested in, obviously, in the matters that were related to, um, uh, that were related to uh, the ability to operate uh, a, a motor vehicle with persons in the, in the vehicle for whom he is responsible and to do that in a calm manner. Um, we feel that, and just following up on, on what Mr. Cook has said, that it is my understanding that he can reapply for uh, a license, um, for a taxi cab license in the future. And if there's some pattern of doing exactly what he has indicated that he is now doing, that we would certainly reconsider our decision. Thank you for those comments. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage. <clears throat> 13 eyes. Motion passes. Item 6.3 is RC number 5 of 1718 by law and licensing to whom was referred RC number 425 of 1617 and RO number 287 of 1617 by the city clerk submitting various licensed applications and recommends that taxi cab drivers license number 1430 be denied based upon his failure to accurate review of relevant convictions on his license application, his record of uh, violations related to the licensed activity, and his record as a repeat law offender. Alderperson Donahue. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I move to accept and adopt. Second. Thank you for that motion and support under discussion. Is Gregory Torres here? I don't see Mr. Torres. Uh, he did appear before the committee. Uh, we had a lengthy discussion about his past record, um, and it was uh, the opinion of the unanimous opinion of the committee that um, that his license be denied at this time, with the understanding that as time goes on, uh, he can certainly reapply if he's uh, able to uh, maintain a good record. Is there any other discussion? Will the clerk please call the roll? Thirteen eyes. Motion passes. Next, we'll move on to item 6.5, RC number 7 of 1718 by the Finance and Personnel Committee to whom was referred RO number 296 of 1617 by City Planning Commission and resolution number 246 of 1617 by Alderperson Bellinger approving an amendment to the project plan of tax incremental district number 13 in the city of Sheboygan, Wisconsin and recommends passing the resolution. Alderperson Donahue. Uh, I would move to accept, adopt, and pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing no, none, uh, would the clerk please call the roll?
13 ayes. Motion passes. Under ordinances, items 7.1 and 7.2 will be referred to the City Planning Commission. Under other matters, City Attorney. 8.1 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2017, December 31, 2017, and June 30, 2018. And that'll be referred to the Law and Licensing Committee. Uh, next, we have a contemplated closed session. Alder Person Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to convene under closed session under the exemption provided in section 19.85 sub 1 sub E of the Wisconsin stats where competitive and bargaining reasons require the closed session related to land in the town of Wilson adjacent to I-43. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Would the clerk please call the roll for closed session. Nice. Motion passes. We'll take a four minute recess and just for our viewers at home, we will be adjourning in closed session. So this will end our broadcast for this evening. <laughs>